All right, now for a tutorial on how to predict the outcome of a reaction and how to balance it. So um, these, two th these are two skills that go hand in hand, so let's go over the both of them together. First of all, um, let's look at these uh, single displacement reactions where you have an element plus a compound, which will produce an element plus a compound. So like we replace like, which means sodium, which, as we can tell from the periodic table, is a metal and therefore a positive ion, we replace the positive portion of this molecule, which in this case is the calcium. So that means we should get sodium part of the molecule and calcium by itself, giving calcium plus sodium paired with the sulfate. Okay, so this is step one where I have switched the parts. Calcium on its own, sodium part of the molecule. Step two, fix the formulas. All right, making sure that, uh, well, calcium by itself is just Ca and that's it, so we leave it as so. And then sodium with sulfur, or sulfate, um, sulfate's a two minus, sodium's a one plus. So the correct formula for sodium plus sulfur is this, sodium sulfate. Again, I meant to say sodium sulfate rather than sodium sulfur, but either way, you understand. Um, okay, anyway, that was part two. I have fixed the formulas. Part three, balance the equation. One sodium, two sodiums. Uh-oh, well, let's fix that. All right, two sodiums, two sodiums. One calcium, one calcium. One sulfate, one sulfate. Done. Same thing here. Step one, switch the pieces. Positive lead switches places with positive iron. So if iron plus lead nitrate, some sort of lead nitrate. Now, lead can take many possible charges. You don't know what it is, so we're just going to assume, lacking any further information, that it's going to be the same charge as the iron was. Okay, iron bonded with three nitrates because it had a three plus charge. Lead's going to bond with three nitrates because it's going to have a three plus charge. Okay, that's step two. I have switched the pieces. Or I should, well, sorry, that's step one. I have switched the pieces. Step two, let's make sure the formulas are right. Yes, that's the formula for iron. Yes, this is the formula for lead three nitrate. Step three, does any balancing need to be done? One iron, one iron, one lead, one lead, three nitrate, three nitrate. We're done. Here, we will be looking at this example of, again, single displacement reaction because you have an element reacting with a compound. And uh, in this case, we see that the element is chlorine being a negative charge, or it, rather the ion would take a negative charge. This means that it's going to switch place with the negative part of this compound, which is the bromine. That means bromine will now be by itself and chlorine will be with the aluminum. So we have to start with that. And so um, I've put the bromine by itself. I've put the chlorine here with the aluminum. That was step one. Put the, um, switch the pieces. Step two, make sure the formulas are correct. I jumped the gun on this one. Um, I guess I could just put Br, but now I need to make sure that Br's formula is correct. Bromine is a diatomic element, so that's why it's Br2. Um, aluminum is a plus three. Chlorine's a minus one, therefore the formula is AlCl3. So there we go, step two done, I fix the formulas. Step three, that will be to balance the reaction. So what I see here is two bromines, and there's three bromines here. That means that um, I'm gonna need to balance this. So I'll put a two right here and a three right here that we have six bromine and six bromine. Well, that gives me two aluminums, so let's make that two aluminums and uh, two times three, that's six chlorines. So I'm gonna put this three here, that way I've also got six chlorines. All right, so there we go. That's a properly balanced equation. Next, okay, no more pure elements. These are compound and compound, so we're just gonna assume that they switch pieces with each other. So let's put the silver here, let's put the sodium here. So that's sodium and sulfate and uh, silver and nitrate. That's step one, I've switched the pieces. Step two, fix the formulas. Sodium is, a, sodium is a plus one, sulfate's a minus two. Therefore, this is the correct formula for sodium sulfate. Silver is a plus one, nitrate's a minus one. Therefore, this is the correct formula. Now we go to balance. Two, sol two sodiums here require two sodiums here. And there's two nitrates. So in order to have two nitrates, you need to put a two right here. And that gives us two silvers. Well, we need to have two silvers. And oh, look, there already are two silvers. And uh, one sulfate, one sulfate. This is done. Next, here. 
aluminum chloride and ammonium phosphate. All right, well, the positive thing switches places with the positive thing. So the aluminum is going to take the ammonium's place. The ammonium is going to take the chlorine's place. So ammonium is now paired with chlorine. And uh, aluminum is now paired with phosphate. Step one, I have switched the pieces. Step two, fix the formulas. NH4 is a plus one. Cl is a minus one. This is fine. Aluminum is a plus three. Phosphate is a minus three. This is fine. Okay, formulas are fine, so now I move on to looking at the balancing of the equation. Three ammonias requires three ammonias, or sorry, ammoniums. Um, this gives three chlorines, that's good because there's three chlorines over here. One aluminum, one aluminum, one phosphate, one phosphate. There we go, that is done. Now let's look at when you have an acid and a base, which is basically just a special type of double displacement reaction. The positive thing switches places with the positive thing. So that means the hydrogen goes here, the calcium goes here. Well, that means I have calcium nitrate. I'll fix the formula later. And then um, this water or this hydrogen goes over here. And when you have hydroxide plus hydrogen, that's water. Okay, well, then let's start by fixing the formulas. Okay, because step one, I just switched the pieces. I put the hydrogen over here, I put the calcium over here. Um, step two, fix the formulas. Calcium is a plus two, so nitrate is a minus one. Therefore, one calcium will pair with two nitrates. Okay, let's see how this balances so far. Two nitrates, one nitrate. Oh, I need to have two of those. One calcium, one calcium. Let's see. Uh, so ignoring the nitrates, let's see how many of these do I, am I going to need. There's two hydrogen three, four hydrogen. So I'll need two of these. And indeed, there's two oxygens. So this would also give me two oxygens. Well, perfect. It's balanced. That's it. All right. Cool. Then let's look at the next one. Acid and a base. Yeah, it's just a double displacement reaction. Put the aluminum here. Put the hydrogen here. Well, hydrogen plus hydroxide is water. Aluminum plus Br is aluminum bromide. I'll fix the formula later. And then the other one is water, because H plus OH is water. Now, now let's see. Um, Got to fix the formula. Lum is a plus 3. Bromine is a minus 1. It should have that formula. Well, that means it needs to be 3 bromines. Let's put a 3 over here. And that's 1 aluminum. Okay. Let's see. 3 oxygen. I need to have 3 oxygen on this side. That means six hydrogens, so there's three right here and three more for a total of six. Perfect, done. All right, next one. Aluminum plus chlorine. Element plus element. Well, that's a classic synthesis reaction. There's not really much else you can do from put the two elements together. So that's aluminum chloride. One aluminum is plus three. A chloride is minus one, so a one aluminum pairs with three chlorines. Now we balance. Um, see, two chlorines, three chlorines. So I'm going to take this two and put it right here. I'm going to take this three and put it right here. That way I've got six chlorine and six chlorine. I've also got two aluminum, so I need to balance that by putting a two right there. Done. All right. Let's look at this next one. Oxygen and hydrogen. Another classic synthesis. The only thing it can possibly make is water. You're not really going to have hydroxide as a stable, as something stable enough to exist on its own without something else to cancel it out. It's going to make a, a, a non-charged molecule. So, water. Um, all right, we've got to balance this because there's two hydrogens, which is great, but one, two oxygens, one oxygen. So let's times this by two. So two oxygen, two oxygen, good. Now there's four hydrogen. So let's put a two right here, that way this can also be four hydrogen, four hydrogen, four hydrogen. All right, there we go, that's done and balanced. Now let's slide these up. Pause the video now to work on these and then uh, see what the solutions are. All right, let's see the solutions for this. There's only one reactant for each of these, so that tells me it's a decomposition right away. That's the only kind of reaction that has one reactant. And moreover, for all for these first three, these are the special ones you have to memorize. So, all right, let's see. Calcium carbonate. Well, all decarbonates decompose according to this rule. 
um, it becomes a metal oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Well, in this case, the metal is calcium, so that's calcium oxide. That's the formula for calcium oxide. And uh, carbon dioxide, calcium, one calcium, three oxygen, three oxygen, one carbon, one carbon. Balanced is written. Done. All right, next one, potassium hydroxide. <laughs> Um, potassium hydroxide will decompose as a metal oxide, which means potassium oxide, and uh, water, like so. Two potassiums, two potassiums, two hydrogens, two hydrogens, two oxygen, one and two oxygens. Done. Balanced. All right, next. A chlorate decomposes to become a metal chloride and oxygen gas, as in sodium chloride plus oxygen gas. All right, now uh, in order to make that work, see two oxygens, three oxygens, uh oh. So let's have three of these and two of these. That way that's six oxygen, two times three is six oxygen, three times two is six oxygen, okay? Balance the oxygens. That gives me two chlorines and two sodiums. So let's fix that by putting a two right here. Two sodium, two sodium, two chlorine, two chlorine, six oxygen, six oxygen, finished. Now here, under high temperatures with no other chemicals present, if it's just sealed off and protected from reacting with anything else, this will split to become potassium and bromine. However, bromine cannot exist as just Br, it is a diatomic element, it is Br2, which makes it necessary to put a 2 right here, two, that was 2 bromine, 2 bromine, but now I've got 2 potassium, so let's make that 2 potassium. Next, okay, this, uh, by the way, the proper name for this is propane, but at any rate, this reacts with oxygen, a carbon-based molecule reacting with oxygen. Well, that's a classic setup for combustion, so let's see what the combustion reaction would look like here. The combustion reaction would always, for a carbon-based molecule, always produce carbon dioxide and water. All right, fair enough. Let's see. Three carbons, three carbons. That part's set. Eight hydrogens. All right, let's make it eight hydrogens. Cool. Now, what do we do with oxygen? Let's see. How many oxygens are there? There is... Uh, Six oxygen here, plus four more oxygen, equals five oxygens. Sorry, that's ten oxygens. Um, I was mentally jumping ahead to the next step because how many of these, if I have ten oxygens here, I need to have ten oxygens here. And how many of these would I need to get ten oxygens? Uh, that's where the number five popped into mind. Um, I would need five of these to get ten oxygens. Okay, it's basically what times 2 is 10? 5. That's the balanced equation. Lastly, looking at this one here, I once again see a carbon-based molecule reacting with oxygen. Classic combustion setup. Um, the products of which are going to be CO2 and H2O. Just like every single other combustion reaction you're going to see that involves a carbon-based molecule. All right, well, let's bounce. Seven carbons requires seven carbons. Sixteen hydrogens, that's this one plus this one. Sixteen hydrogens requires me to get sixteen hydrogens out of this. And what times two is sixteen? That's eight of these. All right, well, carbon is balanced. Hydrogen is balanced. Now, oxygen, let's see, how many oxygens is that? That is 14 oxygen right here. So that's 14 oxygen plus how many here? That's 8. So I got 22 oxygens on this side. That means I need 22 over here. Well, I've already got one right here, so I got 22 oxygens needed. And then I've already got this one. So minus 1 equals 21 oxygens needed. Let's see, is that visible on your screen? Yes, it is. Okay, good. So somehow I need to get 21 oxygens out of here. 
because I'm already saying I need 22 total to balance this. One of them's here. The other 21 are going to be from here. Okay, well, how do I get 21 out of this? Really, the answer to that question is what times 2 is 21? Well, that doesn't give a whole number, unfortunately. The number comes out to, if you figure it out, it's 10 and a half. I would need 10 and a half O2s to get 21 oxygens, which makes sense. Half of an O2 would be one oxygen. Two and a half O2s would be five oxygens. One and a half O2s would be three oxygens. Ten and a half O2s is 21 oxygen atoms. That would give me what I need, except I'm not allowed to have numbers that aren't whole as a coefficient. So I'm going to fix this by timesing the whole thing by two. All of this. As in all the coefficients, that is. As in this coefficient, this coefficient, this coefficient, this coefficient. And maybe that will make all the numbers whole. If not, I'll try three, and then I'll try four, and then I'll try five, and keep going until I find a number that makes everything whole. But pretty much always, you're going to find that timesing everything by two will make your numbers whole. All right. Well, that means uh, this becomes one becomes two, ten and a half becomes twenty-one, seven becomes fourteen, and eight becomes sixteen, giving me the final balanced equation, which I'm going to write off to the side for the sake of neatness, of. Uh, 2C7H15OH plus 21 oxygen molecules produces 14 carbon dioxides and 16 waters. That would be my final balanced equation for this reaction. Let's zoom that in so that you can get a good, clear look at it. And all right, that's the overview. And that takes care of that. Happy studies.